The real red flags to look out for is if your child is now then having difficulty in breathing and, you, and, and they're struggling to breathe or there's gaps when they stop breathing for a particular period of time, or if they're starting to look blue around the lips uh, or on their skin, or if they, they're really difficult to rouse, you can't rouse them, that's an emergency and you need to get to accidents and emergency department as fast as you possibly can. And just really briefly, what are those symptoms that people need to really watch out for? Right. Well, the first thing is that uh, group A streps often start as a sore throat and it can be in the early days being very difficult to distinguish them from viral sore throats. And most of them even now will be still viral and don't need antibiotics. The things to look out for is if your child has a particularly high fever greater than 39 degrees, and unless they're under three months where it's greater than 38, or if they're particularly irritable, and if that's the case, they should contact NHS 111 or your GP. The real red flags to look out for is if your child is now then having difficulty in breathing, and, you, and, and they're struggling to breathe, or there's gaps when they stop breathing for a particular period of time, or if they're starting to look blue around the lips uh, or on their skin, or if they, they're really difficult to rouse, you can't rouse them, that's an emergency and you need to get to accidents and emergency department as fast as you possibly can, whether that's by dialing 999 or whether it's get going in your own transport to get there. But that's time, if the child gets to that point, Time is really of the essence and you have to get that child seen in a hospital really, really quickly. The strep A, when it does spread from one person to another, tends to spread either through droplets or through direct contact with um, saliva or nasal uh, fluids. And, and of course, children tend to spread this around themselves. They, the other issue here is as well that it's not with it's not like COVID, where if you get come into contact with a case of COVID and you pick up COVID, you then develop illness you know, within a few days. With uh, Group A streps, you can pick up the infection and carry it for days, if not weeks, and then at some point something triggers it to then um, develop uh, symptoms and and initially a sore throat and usually what, what one of the commoner ways of that being triggered is is an influenza infection and we we can see at the moment that influenza cases have been rising fairly rapidly over the last few weeks and the last time we had a big surge of group a uh, scarlet fevers was in 2018 and that followed another uh bad influenza winter so um so it's a little bit more complicated than just spreading around. The other thing is that when you're giving antibiotics, and mainly penicillin in this context, there are a lot of issues that you've got to balance. Um, if you give it to close contacts, the, the value for close contacts is quite is, is stronger. But the, the weaker those contacts are, the further away those are, the less value. And, and the possibility of harm from the vaccine uh, from the antibiotics increase because you know some people are allergic to penicillin and giving um, uh, penicillin that that can wipe out the bacteria in your throat can actually then maybe make you more susceptible to picking up another bacteria. So okay, but you know, is it's it a difficult balance? Yeah, really. is is it the the best scenario in a very very difficult scenario? And, it, you know, parents listening yeah. to this will just, I think, want to take any measure that might help in protecting yeah. their yeah. children. Yeah. Now, normally we wouldn't give penicillin to contacts of people with uh, group A streptococci. And, but w when uh, you've got a particularly bad outbreak, then I think the advantages are greater. And so, it, but it is a... a Everything in public health is balancing risks and benefits, and you know, and generalising it to different settings um, might is is often quite difficult. Mm. But I think 
at the moment with case numbers high and probably going to increase over coming weeks because the influenza levels are going up still. I think the, for some settings, at least, the benefits of doing this will outweigh the potential disadvantages. And why is it that primary school children, very young children, are particularly affected by strep A? Or is that just where the strep A virus is at the moment? Well, no, I mean, strep A is a bacteria, it's not a virus. Sorry, and, my apologies. Um, yeah, it, it, strep A can and does affect people of all ages. I've known otherwise uh, fit adults in their late 20s, early 30s die from group A strep infections. So, you know, it is, it affects all ages, it is particularly likely to affect children because they've often not experienced these infections before. And whereas when you're an adult, you've probably already had multiple streptococcal infections throughout your life. So you've got a degree of protection that perhaps younger children don't have. And, um, and of course, the other thing is that children do get sick very quickly in a way that adults don't. And I think that's primarily the, the main risk. And of course, children do tend to share their body fluids around a lot, their saliva and, and, uh, uh, and, and such like, though. So in, enhancing the spread of this uh, bacteria. Um, Professor, can I ask whether the world of public health was expecting um, an outbreak of this nature because the pandemic meant that particularly young children didn't get the chance to mix during the lockdowns? Uh, I think certainly we were expecting influenza to go up this year and, and many of us have been writing and talking about the risk from flu. And when flu is up, we do see a range of other infections, including group A streptococcal infections, being higher. So uh, I think it, to say that we're expecting group A streptococcal infections to and scarlet fever to be particularly high um, is perhaps stretching it. But we would certainly would expect to see the consequences of uh, high numbers of influenza around Right. As we are seeing um, at the moment, and and of which group A streptococci is one of a number of different potential risks associated with where that you see when you've got high numbers of flu cases. And is there any point in parents trying to get their children uh, the flu vaccine now? Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. I mean, it, that that in terms of one of the most important things you can do to protect your child against a group A strep is get them vaccinated against influenza. It's not 100%, but, um, but it, is, it will reduce the subsequent risk quite substantially. And, um, and beyond that, it's actually very difficult to take further steps. Certainly practicing good hygiene, hand hygiene in play groups and, and in schools where possible, but often, if you've got young children, you know that's really yeah. difficult. I, I love the <laughs> idea of good hygiene at a play group. I mean, you could, yeah, you could have yeah, a bash, yeah. but <laughs> not sure. Yeah. I mean, but what would you would you be sympathetic to a parent who actually perhaps knows that their child is is medically vulnerable or, or simply susceptible to, for example, chest infections? Perhaps they're asthmatic. Mm. Asthmatic. Would you be sympathetic if they just kept the child at home and, until after the Christmas holidays? Uh, well, clearly, it's up to the the parent to make the best decision that they can for their child. And, and sometimes it's very difficult to get to know what is the best thing to do in these sort of circumstances. I think even though we've seen the number of cases and severe and deaths, sadly, that we have seen in, in recent days, the overall risk to an individual child is still very low. And hopefully it will remain that because at some point the, this uh, peak in cases of group A strep will, will come to an end and will and the infection will start dying down again for, for uh, somewhat, um, for hopefully until some time in the future again. Mm -hmm. The last big wave we saw was in spring 1918 and, and the cases of scarlet fever we saw then are still uh, at its peak are still a lot higher than we're seeing at the moment but you know clearly we're uh, case infections are still going up at the moment, so it's difficult to know yeah. how high the uh, number of cases will go eventually this, this winter.